Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. We're in the middle of a heated volleyball match between the two teams, and let's see how that turns out, shall we? Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy it for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. As the volleyball match went on, Sissel and I found ourselves in a frequent tangle of limbs. I swear Owen was doing this on purpose. For the last 20 minutes, every time Owen hit the ball, it somehow knocked the two of us into enough intimate positions to fill a Kama Sutra. Or maybe it's because I'm a sore loser and we're losing the game 2-15. to It's so unfair, though. Owen hits the ball so hard, it's difficult to follow where it's flying to next. And Philip, He didn't hit very hard, but he was fucking fast. Hey, Adrian, uh, Cecil, are you two doing okay? You're looking really red. We're fine. Just, just really hot out today. Yeah, uh, just, uh, just the weather. We're a total mess. Our faces were glowing like overripe tomatoes, not to mention the large tints growing in both our shorts. Cecil either hasn't noticed me staring or was ignoring it. Either way, I'm thankful. Um, if you say so, I'll go ahead and serve the ball then. I finally pulled my eyes away from Cecil's nether regions to focus on back on the game. The ball was soaring over the net. I got it! And I actually did it! With an awkward swing, I smacked the volleyball all the way to the opposite corner of the court. There was a blur. Philip shot across the sand like a missile and saved it at the very last moment. Owen's got the ball now. He sends me a sly wink before spiking the ball towards me. Go! I caught the ball. With my face. I instantly wheeled around and there was a soft oof as I knocked Sissel over along with me. My face lands on something warm and warm. <laughs> A whiff of must suddenly fills my nostrils, and I couldn't help but inhale the sweet scent deeply. What is this? Be oh my god, this fucking saxophone music! The thing pulses with warmth as I involuntarily rubbed against it with my cheek. Uh. uh Adrian, get, get off! Oh, I landed on. Oh, I landed on Sissel's crotch. What a, a tragedy. As I climbed off of Sissel, Owen and Philip came prancing over with victorious grins on their faces. And that's the match. It's a shame you guys lost, but hey. It looked like you two were having fun anyway. He gave us another wink. That bastard. Philip glances over at Sissel with concern. Whoa, Sissel, your fur is a mess. That was an understatement. Sissel's fur was already wet from the, from the kayaking fiasco earlier, but now it was caked in thick layers of sand. He practically looked like an angry sand sculpture. Uh, I'll be fine. I think there's a public shower thing around here. I'll go try and wash all this off. Sissel stomps away and disappears into the forest trail. I stared after him, my head still spinning from our intimate collisions earlier. I wonder if I should... No. <sighs> no this is a Philip run. Try to make things less awkward. That was probably the most awkward 20 minutes of my life. Uh, come on, man. I know you enjoyed it. No, seriously, Owen. What the hell were you thinking? Owen looked taken aback and scratched his head in dismay. Jeez, it was a joke. I just figured I'd make things more interesting. I'm pretty sure sissel has got a crush on you. I was just trying to help things along. Nothing wrong with that. It's called tact, Owen. You should learn it sometime. Ouch. All right, I guess I did go a little overboard back there. I'm sorry about that. I sigh and rub my eyes tiredly. It's fine. I just hope Sissel's not too upset with me. Oh, my little cottontail's probably fine. sissel has been through a whole... been through way worse before. He's not mad or anything, he's just being his usual and annoyed self. I hope so. I'm gonna try and patch things up before it gets too awkward between us, though. I turn to trek my way towards the shower stalls. <laughs> Good luck, Adrian! <laughs> After a long walk, aimless wandering for half an hour, I stumbled onto Sissel in front of the shower stalls. He was trying to dry himself with a hairbrush and battery-powered hairdryer, but didn't seem to have much luck. Hey, Sissel, how's it going? Oh, Adrian. I could be doing better, but my fur is going to take forever to dry out. Ugh, I can still feel sand in some spots. That's weird. I usually only take a few minutes. For, it usually only takes a few minutes for my fur to dry out after a shower. It's different for rabbits. Our undercoat is ridiculously thick and traps water like a sponge. Not to mention how it basically sucks the warmth out of my skin when it's damp. I could help, but chuckled slightly at the sudden mental image. It must be a really fluffy and soft coat. 
Oh, har, har. Let's all laugh at my misery. Sizzle rolls his eyes and goes back to drying his fur, albeit with little success. He seems to be having trouble reaching his back. Uh, do you need any help with that? Huh? W well, I guess. Could you get the sandy spots on my back? I armed myself with the brush and hair dryer. I gently began smoothing out the sand deep inside Sissel's undercoat while blowing it dry. Wow, it's like brushing a warm and fluffy cloud. Oh, shut up. Sissel's face was flushed slightly, but he relaxed and leaned into my brushing. This was surprisingly intimate. A stray, a stray thought struck me as I made my way down Sissel's back. Say, where did you get the brush and hair dryer? You couldn't even afford your own meals a few days ago. What are you trying to say? I didn't steal it. I flinched at the sudden snap of anger. S sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I was just curious. Sissel sighed and relaxed a bit. Sorry for snapping. It's just that most people assume... Never mind. I meant was the one who gave me the brush and dryer. There was a small pause and Sissel's face edged into a small grin. She's the one who stole it from a supply closet. I mean, the stuff was being donated to the, ne to the needy anyway. I was kind of needy at the time, so uh, never mind. I gave Sissel an encouraging smile and gently brushed his head. Hey, we've all had our share of misfortunes. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. Sure, I guess. It didn't sound like he took my words to heart. Our little brushing session continued for a while. Sissel kept leaning closer and closer to me as I cleared out his fur. Heh, <laughs> getting comfortable, aren't we? Sissel laughed and playfully elbowed me in the stomach. You're just too good at what you do. I've always wanted someone to brush me like this, kind of like siblings or family. It feels pretty cozy. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to apologize about the whole touchy-feely part of our volleyball game. I hope things aren't too awkward between us. Sissel scoffed and poked me on the nose. Don't worry about it. Owen was just being a horny dick. Wait, that didn't come out right. But you get the point. Heh, <laughs> whatever you say, Sissel. I stood up and dusted myself off. There, all done. You're officially sand free. Thanks, Adrian. There was a slow pause between us as Sissel scratched his head nervously. Say, if it's not too much to ask, could you brush me again sometime? I mean, having someone else around makes things easier, uh, and... It was my turn to laugh as I gave Sissel a friendly punch to the shoulder. Of course, Sissel, any time! Hm. That was an interesting afternoon. My head was still spinning from the warmth bubbling against my chest. Mrs. Corlise is allowing us some time to relax before heading back to the academy. It's probably for the best. Sissel is trying to stay far, far away from the water while Philip and I were bickering somewhere. For now, I just want some time alone and take a peaceful walk through the forest. Ooh, that's pretty. Ah, oh, that's a lovely cabin. Hmm? I just keep wandering deeper into the forest, but I didn't expect to find a cottage all the way out here. A cottage, that's right. Not a cabin. Cabin is usually, it is like wooden. That's pretty worn down. I wonder who used to live here. Ooh. Move! There was a loud crash as a nearby tree falls down, missing me by inches. What? Hmm, I missed. Or did your wish block it? Not bad for something so weak. Well, you could have killed me! It's a light concussion, actually. Don't be such a drama queen. You just tried to smash me with a tree. Can you really blame me? That's besides the point. Who are you? Are, are you here for a fight? Me? A fight? Nah. I'm just here to kill some time until the 13th. Watching Adrian scream like a little baby's quite hilarious. No hard feelings, of course. You've got a few screws loose. Sounds like a fight to me. Not quite. Why would I fight you when the meteor shower is just two days away? That day is the pinnacle of your strength, after all. I don't have a death wish. Adrian, on the other hand... Shut up! Shut up! Too soon? Anyway, to answer your previous question, I don't have a name. I do vaguely remember someone calling me... Holly, at some point, though. Vaguely remember? Oh, you're a sharp one. Yes, my memories are a tatters as well. Just like you and that lanky wish of yours. That's right, Echo. Your memory's in shreds, too, isn't it? Stop pretending to be a guy when you're just as little as your wisher. That doesn't answer why you keep trying to ruin me at every turn. Especially if you don't even remember anything. True. To be honest, I don't know why I hate you so much, either. I just remember seeing you a few days ago, and my heart went, Wow, fuck this guy. Jeez, is it because I'm ugly? Why can't we all just be friends? Even if my memory's in tatters, I'd st I still remember bits and pieces. 
All I know is this. My wisher deserves the world, and you took it from her. That's all the reason I need to hate you. All right, that's it. I'm taking her out. Oh, don't you have any manners? It's rude to fight on somebody else's grave. G grave? I glanced at the cottage and felt chills from earlier crawl down my back. Who lives here? Huh? She's already gone. That bitch is crazy. Move back! There was a rumble as another nearby tree uprooted and nearly crashed into us again. Okay, let's get out of here before she actually kills us. Oof! <laughs> Echo grabs me by the wrist and forcefully hauls me down the forest trail. As the two of us quietly leave, I turn back and stare at the forest's lonely cottage. Just before it goes out of view, I think I heard a soft wail echoing through the woods. It sounded so sad. Maybe it was just my imagination. Whatever, we better get out of here. Hmm? Ooh. The students returned to the academy without any incident. There were no classes today, so most of us crashed back in our dorms for the night. It's been a long and confusing day. I'm pretty exhausted too, but I'm feeling up for a midnight snack before hitting the hay. <sniffs> hmm? Somebody's already here. Yo, Adrian, grabbing a bite to eat? Yeah, just a quick snack before bed. What are you doing? Now that I'm closer, I can see dirty kitchen utensils and scraps of food scattered everywhere. This place is looking worse than when Philip blew up the toaster yesterday. This is gonna flip his lid if he sees this. So, why all the carnage? Hey, it's not as bad as it looks. Okay, I admit I might not be the best cook, but that doesn't mean I can't make something halfway decent. I even made a bet on it with Sissel earlier. My honor is on the line, Adrian. It smells like your honor is as good as dead. Oh, come on, you're supposed to be cheering me on. Is the saucepan supposed to be smoking? What? Everything's under control! Owen dashes across the kitchen to salvage his blackened pasta. Ugh, I failed again. You don't do this much, do you? But, well, I usually just go out to eat. And Sizzle used to cook for me before our little fight, spat, whatever you want to call it. <sighs> I miss the good old days. He used to actually smile at me instead of spearing me with eye lasers. Hey, this is a nice guy under all that yelling. I'm sure you two can make it up if you keep working at it. I don't know. I was a pretty big dick. Also, I have a pretty big dick. You know, for a moment, I thought I could actually take you seriously. Life's too short to be taken seriously, dude. We're all going to be resting on a bed of flowers sooner or later. Anyway, enough of this sentimental mush. I still gotta win my bet with Sissel, and now I have you as my taste-testing guinea pig. What? I was about to retort when I noticed a figure outside the window. Speaking of Sissel... Yep, that was him. He was walking rather briskly down the street as if trying to avoid being seen. Why is he going out so late? He's heading towards the rundown side of town. Yeah, Sissel stinks out a lot. I'm sure he's got his reasons. It's none of our business either way. Anyway, let's focus back on my pasta making. You gotta help me out, Adrian. As Owen readies the stove again, the smell of burnt cheese fills the room. What have I gotten myself into? I just wanted a snack. I was about to give Owen a hand, but another figure passing by the door caught my attention. Oh, hello, Philip. Why are you up so late? Oh, you know, just the usual late night studying on the roof. Philip seems a little off today. His bag seems more full and heavy than usual, too. As he walks into the kitchen, soft metallic clinks can be heard. I see Owen's dragged you into his pasta mess. Any chance you can rescue me? You're going to have to pray that you're going to have to pray to the pasta gods for that kind of help. Philip, kiddo, how you doing? You look dead tired. Heh, <laughs> need a little love to wake you up? Owen scoots over to sling a flirty arm around Philip's shoulder. F Philip knocks it away. Personal space. Anyway, I have to get going. You two have fun. Good luck, Adrian. <laughs> huh, that's weird. Uh, the hall Philip's taking, taking doesn't lead to the roof. As Philip disappears, Owen lets out a long groan and slumps down on his chair. Hey, Owen, you alright? Hmm, yeah, I'll be fine. By the way, you don't have to stay here in my pasta hell. Why don't you just grab your snack and head off to bed? Um, actually, I don't mind helping you out. Your honor's on the line, after all. Heh. <laughs> Heh, thanks, Adrian. You're probably the nicest person I've ever met. Me? Jeez, you got pretty low standards. Please marry me. Well, that's pretty sudden. What's your net worth? But what? I thought we could share our love together. I'm afraid I've got no love to give, buddy. Anyway, let's get back to your pasta cooking. You've got a bet to win, don't you? Right. That's fine. 
The two of us spent the rest of the night burning pasta. In the end, we managed to make something edible, but just barely. It, it didn't seem to count as much of a success, and... But Owen seemed really happy. That's cute music. Day four, false justice. Hmm. This is getting more and more intriguing. Another morning, another day. I rubbed my eyes drowsy as I looked back as I looked about the room. Hmm? It was like someone slid a note under my door. Adrian, it has been brought up to my attention that you witnessed a teacher miscon misconduct incident that occurred yesterday. Please meet me in my office this morning to discuss the details of said incident so that proper action may be taken. Mr. Rokov, Vice Principal. <sighs> I'm not liking the sound of this. Well, let's see what fresh hell awaits me today. As I stumbled across the courtyard towards the teacher's office building, I couldn't help but yawn repeatedly. Hmm. Really not much of a morning person. Now, which way is the office? Huh. What the... Oh my god, what the fuckity fuck? What the hell is this thing? It's not moving. I wave my hand in front of its face? It doesn't move an inch. Is it even alive? Other students were walking around it as if it's not even there. Maybe they can't see it, like how they can't see Echo or that ashy girl. Um, hello? Can you hear me? No response again. Eh, it doesn't have ear even have ears. I tried poking it, but my finger slips right through like smoke. Huh, e Echo, are you there? Yo, Adrian, you called? Yeah, glad to see you're awake inside my head. Just barely. Your grogginess makes this thing kind of things kind of difficult. Anyway, what can I do for you? Well, first of all, what is this thing? Is it dangerous or anything? I don't want some weird ghost wandering around campus and cursing people. One crazy spirit is enough for me. It's... A corrupted wish, I think. It must have done something terrible to its wisher to have festered into something like this. Although it doesn't feel like it has real power, either. It's creepy, but it probably doesn't have the strength to do much damage. Heck, I doubt it can even move on its own. So, are we just going to leave it here? How much else to do, really? You can't even touch it. I guess you're right. I really hope it doesn't end up hurting people. It's right inside campus, too. Well, it can't hurt people if it can't even move. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Anyway, you better get going. You're late. Oh, shit. I, I still gotta meet it with, Mr. with that Mr. Rokov guy. I sprinted down the courtyard, shooting the weird figure one last look. It hasn't budged a bit. I sure hope Echo's right about this. Oh, there's no use worrying. Time to head off to the office. Oh, shit. Oh, no! She's here. Oh, wow. It's actually a nice office. I'd never been to this side of the campus before. Even so, the area that held all the that held, that held held all the teacher's offices always felt a little intimidating. Now, let's see. Which one is Mr. Rokov's office? It shouldn't be too hard to find. They're all in alphabetical order. Let's see. R, R... Alright, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!